Men of the 24th Infantry. This is Texas. And we have a great opportunity here. A legacy, if proven worthy, will carry us all the way to the shores of France. Yeah! Trey, where are you at? I'm in LA, my man. Where you at? Oh, you were in LA. I was there. Um, I went back to Chicago, somewhere you're familiar with, right? Oh man, yeah, Chicago. Good food, good people, very festive town. That's right. You know, I'm from here, so I mean, I figured like spend quarantine with family since we can do this remote now. You know, and uh, so yeah, I left LA in a month ago. But I mean, it was starting to get kind of like again uh, become a hot spot out there. Is everything better now? Uh, we, we, I think it's still a hot spot. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to manage. I, I, I stay where I'm at. You know what I mean? Yeah. My wife and I, we both, we try to be as safe as possible. Um, and, and keep, you know, hold up. We, we don't go anywhere unless we have to, you know, it's yeah. weird. This is, I mean, it's strange getting used to this thing. I you know. know? <laughs> I got, I got even mask with designs, like a Chicago Bulls one and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> A thing. Yeah, it's it's strange. I was I'm having this conversation a few days ago with a buddy of mine. Like, man, like I remember when it was I, you, nobody wanted to put the mask on, and now you walk outside with nothing on. You're like, I know. It's like <laughs> you like it. Yeah, yeah. very well maybe. <laughs> yeah, I mean yeah. that's it's kind of going to be the way of the world until at least we get a vaccine or something. You know, people are going to have to. It's a small price to pay. You know, if it helps, then uh, you know keeps everyone safe. That's the most important. It's also a great reminder of the fragility of life. I know. We should love each other more, man. I mean, something so, you know, something we can't see is causing everybody in the world to wear a mask. It, it's crazy to think how we took stuff, the simple things in life for granted, you know, going to a ball game, you know, being among people, all these things right. now, it, it just became, a, a, you know, it was in a sense a privilege that we kind of, took for granted that we had you know and man it, it kind of spins to, to the way of the world where things are going on with, with you know um with the protests and just the times we're in things are changing in so many ways you know um and, and looking at your film too going back to that it, you can see what a world that was you know 1917 it's not like hundreds of years ago, you know, but you look yeah. at it and it's like, wow, I can't imagine that was reality back then, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. No, I understand. And, the, and the, the, what's so interesting about that, you know, looking at, at this time when we're alive, when we're, while we're here and we're experiencing what we're experiencing and listening to, you know, the stories that our parents or our grandparents will tell us. And then, you know, being able to look in, into, you know, books that, that go through elaborate tales of, you know, what was and then experiencing this, it doesn't feel too far removed, does it? I know, right? It's like sometimes life works its weird ways and kind of recycles itself, you know, and we're, we're, we're almost entering kind of similar times that, you know, you can trace back a couple decades ago, you know? Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. So, it's so interesting. And Obviously, it leads me to ask you about the film. Uh, true story has to be, uh, and so many inspired by true events. This movie, for all intents and purposes, is inspired by true events. Absolutely, but the, the riot in, in itself is is true. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tell me what kind of you wrote it with Kevin, and obviously Kevin's has got a knack of writing. I mean, just historical stuff and just prominent stuff that affects the African American community in, in general. I mean, look how Chirac is timely, you know, oh, like yeah. when you look at it now, and it's like he's kind of sees these things ahead of time in a way. What prompted you guys to kind of what was the initial concept to bring you guys together to to put the script together? This was just an idea of Kevin's. He had an idea, wrote a script 20 years ago. Wow. Um, I, I met him. Foreshadowing he has. You know? <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I, it's interesting. Everything is kind of foreshadowed that you don't really, you know, that exists that you don't know anything about. And then mm -hmm. when you find out about it, it's like, wow, why does that look just like this? And wow, was it, why wasn't I informed so I could have a point of reference as to how to deal with this? Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, that, I think that's, that's, a reality that makes me sad in, in our country, the things, not necessarily the things we do know, but the things we don't. Mm -hmm. um, and Kevin being, you know, a historian and being a screenwriter and a screenwriting teacher, just in general, you know, he, he, has, his, um, he has his finger on the pulse in terms of that and, and just the knowledge that he has and the, 
research that he's done, it really, you know, fueled this story. He shared it with me a number of years ago when I was in uh, grad school. Uh, we had been friends uh, up, up to that point for a number of years. Uh, he was my screenwriting teacher at um, at University of Kansas. Wow. So the student has become oh, world. Hot now. <laughs> well, he's teaching well, you know. He, yeah. <laughs> no, he was a great teacher. Uh, just just a great te- as great a teacher as he is a guy. Mm-hmm. Um, and and that speaks a lot for him. He's I think he's fantastic. Oh yeah, I've met him on on a couple of occasions. Just just a tremendous person, kind Love individual. Him. Yeah, mm-hmm. very well spoken. Mm-hmm. 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 But he brought it to me um, just in 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 terms of like, hey Trey, one day I want you to play the lead in this part. And I was like, yeah, cool. Yeah. And I went back to school. <laughs> I, I, I got out, you know, did some, did a couple of jobs, a um, couple of gigs. Some of them were his independent films. Mm-hmm. And uh, we, we ended up writing another script together, um, decided to write again together, and it ended up being this. Wow. So it was Kevin's idea. I was going to kind of ask you how yeah, did no, he no, it was, for you to be in the lead role in a sense. So Kevin had this already mapped Kevin out. masterminded the lead role <laughs> and then, you know, masterminded the, the partnership. No, he, he's I, a, a thing I'll say. One of the many good things I'll say about him is that I, I, he, he believes in his community. He believes in his mm-hmm. students. Um, there are a number of people in the, in this film that, you know, have worked with him or, were students of his that he believes in and gives opportunities to, you know, be in his films. And I, I just always thought that was such a, a generous thing to do. He's a, he's a very lovely spirit and, you know, and, and engaging in a, in a very positive way. And I think, you know, trying to push forward, a, a, you know, a crop of, you know, creatives that might not, you know, get the opportunity because they live in Kansas versus mm-hmm. Los Angeles or uh, New York or, you know, Atlanta or Chicago, you know what I mean? Right. He, yeah. That makes a difference. Yeah, yeah. How, when you tell a story like this that's based, obviously, on, on true events, how many liberties do you guys take to, obviously, you got to make it cinematic in a way, too, but um, how much truth do you bring into it? And, and you try, how, how much of a focus was it to, to have the details of it versus how much do you take to, to make it more cinematic and have some liberties with it and create? Again, that's the beauty of working with Kevin and, 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 and interests of my own. We take liberties to create things, but we're not creating things that aren't real. We're not adding themes that aren't real or that we haven't dealt with or don't still deal with today. In particular, you know, we're dealing with the theme of colorism um, very highly in this, in this picture. We're dealing with you know, the idea of what a scarlet letter can do to a woman when people perceive her as being one thing when she's actually something else and you know, the effects that that has on her life or you know, what, what, what the dynamic of a, of, a, of a black community looks like when you know, everyone, when you have so many dark skinned people and then a light skinned person comes in to educate people because he's educated and you know what I mean? Just the idea of what, you know, who are you, Uncle Tom, all these different things and being able to break through the stigmas of what it means to be African-American at this time, despite being dark skinned or light skinned, despite being educated or uneducated per se, mm-hmm. and, and really find a place of humanity where everybody can understand we all have a journey and our journey has led to here with each other. Now, how are we going to face you know, life? And I, you know, I think that's, I, I feel like it made our, our picture you know, that much better and, and those themes fit seamlessly into the historical context of um, what it meant of just life in 1917 for black people in Houston, Texas. You know, one thing that stood out to me uh, when you mentioned it, it wasn't just white versus black, it was the darker skinned black people seeing a lighter skinned black person in a different way, saying that, that scene where you said, oh, well, my parents were slaves too. You know, when Boston kind of has that interaction when they're going at it, it mm-hmm. are you picking on me because of I'm lighter than you? That stuck with me because I didn't know it was that sort of tension that existed by the yeah. lightness. You, you could be African-American, but it's the color of your skin that amongst the community that was still a, a, a problem, I think they butted over. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's the house Negro and the field Negro, the person who has it easier, the light skinned people that have it easier, the mulattoes or the quadroons or whatever you want to call them that have it easier in, in the house and then the dark skinned Negroes that are, you know, working the fields, getting beat, being treated, you know, much more, you know, harshly. And I think even that is psychological trauma, you know, that you're, you're, you're in, instilling in these people and it, and it trickles down. Real story. Um, I went to, my, the first college I went to was Andrew College in Cuthbert, Georgia. 
um, deep, deep South Georgia. And um, I, I was majoring in theater there. And, you know, it's a small town, um, like maybe 20, 30 miles away from the Florida state line. And I remember I, I was, um, it was a Sunday. Um, I think it was a Sunday, Sunday or Saturday. I was in a, a play rehearsal. I left play rehearsal to go get a haircut downtown Cuthbert, not too far away from the school. And I turned around and I see this girl follow me, dark skinned girl, very pretty girl, dark skin, just follow me through town. I'm like, okay, uh, <laughs> good day. Keep walking. I go into the barber shop. She comes in and she steps right in front of me. And I'm looking at her like, um, do I know you? And she says to me, you cute, but you a red bone. And then she walks out. What? And that was people, like, what are you up with me? Because I mean, and it's a thing like what we still, we think like this because we, I mean, and it's so deeply instilled and ingrained in our experience of being black in America that, you know, it isn't there. There are subsets in the culture that, you know, feel like they're, they're divided as well in terms of being dark skin and being light skin. And I can't, I'm not going to sit here and say that, you know, light skin people haven't had, you know, the, the, the opportunities that dark skin people, you know, ha uh, have had or haven't had based on the color of their skin. I'm not going to, I can't talk to somebody else's experience. I can tell you that my father is very dark skin. My mother's light skin. Hence I'm light skin. My brother's light skin. My sister's dark. I'm sorry. My brother's dark skin. My sister's dark skin. I'm the lightest of the crop. Mm -hmm. And I have the same thing. I deal with the same thing. I go through the same thing. It doesn't diminish anybody else's experience but doesn't diminish mine either. And, and right. themes like that, they're all across America. Not something that you hear about a lot, but they're there. And I think, again, like in terms of telling a story about history, if you don't know where you come from, you don't know where you're going. And if we can't, as a people, just in general, focus on, you know, focus on what makes us human, focus on what makes us equal, focus on what, what gives us the opportunity to breathe the same air and live life. And that, what that is, is just the fact that we're human human and humanity. We have red blood. We have white bone. We have, you know, we have dreams. We have, we have children. We have families. Until we can recognize everybody as being human, as being equal, we got a lot of work to do. And these stories are, in, in my opinion, reference points to, you know, what happens when you push people too far. Yep. No question. And you know what? Uh, that brings me to the intensity in this movie is so raw and, and authentic. And I really appreciate it. There's no, you guys aren't holding back with anything. You know, the dialogue, the, the, the language, just the, the scenes, intensity showing like what happens, you know, the, the fights, everything was so intense. How, how important was it for you and Kevin to, to showcase and depict the you know not hide behind something or cut away with a scene just really show the rawness of, of what was going on and to get that sense because I think that's what kind of shouts out the most how how real it seemed. I understand um, it, it was very important for us to make it feel real uh, particularly because it happened in 1917 and when you tell these older stories I mean first of all I don't know. I mean, you know, I, I like to think I'm a cinephile, <laughs> but there's so many things I know that just I, I haven't been Too able much to, to catch up. Right. <laughs> no, you, 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 there's a lot. Of, there's a lot out there, mm -hmm. but I haven't seen um, a lot of tales, particularly of, of black people at this at this time in history in America. I just I haven't. And you don't want anybody to, to get lost in the idea that, oh, this is just 100 years ago. Oh, yeah, this is you know what I mean? You want to bring it to life in a, in a manner that feels like when you're watching it, you're in it, not just you're observing it. And for, the, for that reason, you have to make it as, I mean, as, as real as today. And I mean, the way that we feel intensity now should be, you know, parallel to the way that they felt intensity then in order for us to be able to see that and identify with it. So I think it was very important for us to tell that story. But, you know, in addition to that, this is a story that it, it feels like, it feels more real to me in terms of the way that it progresses. It's a story that simmers yep. and it simmers until it boils and it boils until the top comes off and then the movie's over. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But that, that's so much life. And again, just to get to the point, like that's what, what we were trying to do was show you a slice of life, real life, not just a depiction of, that was in our minds, but something that, 
is tangible and and that would give you a bit of the wow factor of have we really come far have we not am i muted i saw <laughs> no you're mute. good i hear you I'm... <laughs> yeah, I, yeah and i just saw this mute button coming like oh lord no um yeah no have, how how far have we come have we come far at all Mm -hmm. Looking at this and seeing this and seeing this play out in, in our day to day lives, whether you're watching it on the news or whether you're in the crowd, like, wow, this is we haven't come that far. We still haven't gotten it. And yeah, so to, to your point and to answer your question, it was very important for us to make it as real and, and the tension as palpable um, as uh, as you would experience today. You know, want to end things off on a, on a lighter note. I always love asking actors and directors and and writers, uh, what sort of things are hobbies? Because I always feel like you're real. You're a real person first and foremost before a performer, and you need to need to bring that reality to mm -hmm. your work. You know, because mm -hmm. that's how you get a rich character. You, you through having everyday experiences in life. You're just not an actor, a performer all the time. What are some things you enjoy doing in your, in your personal life? I mean, COVID aside, like yeah. hobbies or interests that really kind of either you get away from when you're, you know, working on something to just clear your mind. What are some things you really enjoy in your personal everyday life? I'm a nature guy, man. Yeah. I love hikes. I love, you know, I, I love just whether or not, I'm, whether I'm hiking it, you know, through, a forest or whether I'm driving through the mountains or I love to fish. It really clears my mind. I also, um, I love the Simpsons, man. I'm a <laughs> nice fanatic. classic. Like I, I have every season and like, I feel like every day I watch the Simpsons. <laughs> um, no, are I mean, you into the theory that the Simpsons predict the future and, and catch on I to all. That, I think that they, I don't think that, I think that they are so creative. Mm -hmm. You know, and they and they think outside of the box that, you know, something's bound to happen that looks similar. And when it does, you know what I mean? They just, you know, nobody's got a crystal ball, but some <laughs> people are really brave and the Simpsons are super brave. So I love that, man. Yeah. That's cool. I love that. You see, these are the nuggets you just don't get until you ask you know, and find out. <laughs> Yeah. Awesome work, Trey. Uh, really enjoyed seeing uh, the work you put out with Kevin, and, and just it's it's startling. You know, you, you learn. I learned a lot. You know, just like even I told you, I didn't know how people treated each other even in these days. And it's like something you can take away from this. You know, no matter what, I think that's an important thing. When you f see a movie and it impacts you in some way, or you learn something from it, then it it does its job. You know, in that way. And I feel like this is a good. Uh, eye-opening lesson and, and, and people should definitely see it so fantastic work you're a writer now so maybe you're, <laughs> the acting part uh, you know that's always there but man you can you can write too so that those classes with Kevin paying off for sure more to come my man more to come I appreciate you absolutely hope we catch up down the road and, and looking forward to more from you but uh, fantastic work thank you so much you take care Take care, stay safe with your family, most importantly, and, and good health and, and safety. You too, my man. Enjoy the Chicago food. I miss it. Hey, I'm, I'm going to have a beef for you, Italian. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, buddy. Take care. Take care. Bye bye. When I aim the gun, I saw a man. He didn't see one back. <laughs>